Ah, Mrs. Walker. Yes? No, I, I meant it is Mrs. Walker, isn't it? Yes, of course it is. Dr. Riley's still in Bermuda, where the shorts come from. <laughs> oh, thank you. And, um, how are we? Ill or well? Neither. How are you? Oh, me? Fine. Uh, but you must be somewhere in between. Ill and well. No. Right. This is a social visit. How nice to see you looking so... nothing, medically. <laughs> How are you? Oh, you said. Do relax, dear. I'd like to know the sex of my child. <laughs> well, it's a boy, isn't it? No, not the one I've got, the one I'm going to have. <laughs> well, I can tell you with the utmost certainty that it's going to be one of two things. <laughs> That's a little pediatric joke, and whenever I crack it, it falls flat on its face. Fine. Uh, Dr. Valentine, is there anything I can do to stop you being absolutely terrified of me? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's funny, that, isn't it? I see women all the time. Well, 50% of the time, we all do, yet... You have that in you which I would fain call master. Mistress. Boss. Kent. Yorkshire. No, Kent, in King Lear, to the silly old fool, Shakespeare. Uh, the sex of my baby, Dr. Valentine. They'll let Valentine. you know the moment it's born. Yes, I'd like to know. <laughs> I see. You want to know the sex of your baby. That's right. Why ever didn't I say? Well, we can't always come right out with what's on our mind, can we? No, some more so than others. And it's my job to read between the lines, and now that you've told me what you really came for, I can't help you. It's called amniocentesis. Is it? Well, I know it is. How do you? I can read. Read what? Anything you care to shove in front of me. <laughs> M-F-Y-P-T-L-L-V-F-T <laughs> X-E-F... Um, what are you doing? Writing a prescription. Oh, but I don't want anything. It's for me. <laughs> right. Amniocentesis. Well, uh, women of, that is to say, ladies of uh, who... My age. No, some are far younger. Uh, to look at. Oh, God, help me. Um, <laughs> up here, some are younger and are tested in a way that you seem to know everything about. And the fluid is used to determine the sex. Absolutely. This is all good stuff. Excellent, Mrs. Walker. You seem to know exactly what you're in for. It is still Mrs. Walker, isn't it? Yes. Yes, this is good. Uh, but, but I must be firm here. If you can be. Mm, yes. I'm going to throw a word at you, and I'd like your opinion of it. Mystery. I think it sums you up very well, Dr. Ballard. <laughs> we are not talking about me, Mrs. Walker. We are talking about the mystery of sex, the sex of your baby. Are you married? Yes, thank you. Very much so indeed. You make it sound as if you've got three wives. No, you're wrong. Three sons, one wife. Well, if she found she was pregnant, wouldn't you want to know what it was? I most certainly would, because I've had a vasectomy, but if I hadn't... No. <laughs> wouldn't you want a little girl? Yes, because we're running out of boys' names, but... As you imply, I would be disappointed for exactly two minutes, as I was last time, Edward, and the time before that, William. Then I counted their toes and their fingers, and thank God there were 20 of each, between them. But if you really want to know, I'll ask your gynecologist. Oh, perhaps I'd better. No, it's all right, I'll do it. Your emotional state, shall we say, tends to make you slow to come to the point. I tend to go straight for it. I had noticed. Mm. You're off. Uh, to catch an architect in bed. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Your washing machine is stupid. So are lots of things, and people. My mum said that if you buy cheap, you buy twice. You need a new one. Love me, love my washing machine. Uh, <clears throat> I've broken it. Because it's cheap? Accidentally. Uh, my radio was cheap too. You haven't broken that, I notice. I hate competition in the morning. Then turn it off. Oh, may I? Sure you don't mind? I wasn't listening to it. Oh, boy, sit down. I haven't broken the kettle either. I could murder a cup of coffee. Oh, nonsense. I'm sure it would put up a very good fight. <laughs> now, that washing machine hasn't broken. It's merely fainted at the thought of these. Um, yes, I wanted your advice about those. It says hand wash on the label. I don't know how to. You get two rocks from a stream and bang them together. <laughs> Preferably while you're still wearing them. <laughs> What have I done? I suppose you've left the cap off the toothpaste and stuck the butter knife in the marmalade. 
Peter. I've missed you. Uh, Peter. I reached out my arm this morning, and there was this long, cold space where you should have been. Yes, how nice to be thought of as a hot water bottle. Uh, Peter. <laughs> yes, and you're Helen. When I... Uh, good morning, by the way. Said <laughs> yes yesterday. I should have... You look awful. Said no yesterday. Slip of the tongue. You didn't actually say yes. You made me say it. But don't worry. I've always been told that you're insane. Well, that's sorted then. Mm. What is? How dare you look so good this early? Where have you been? I also said that my hormones were playing tricks on me. They do tend to when you're getting on a bit. Do they? What's the time? 9.30. Oh, my God, she'll kill me. The woman I work for. Mustache, heavy day at the office. Bit of a dragon, is she? Mm, pretends to be. Have you ever noticed that when the sun rises, the truth also rises with it? There are two things I mean never to see. The sunrise and the sound of music. One's too bright, the other's too noisy. <laughs> Just like us. You're going to be witty every morning. Uh, no. Not that it matters. Good. A joy to behold, but not to listen to. I'll cope. Been up long. Yes. Silly girl. Shall I pack your suitcase? Because I broke your washing machine. No, not just that. Why, then? What for? Why not? Why not what? Marry me! Love! Morning, Jane. Do close your mouth. Surely you've heard of love. Uh, male. Yes, that's right. Oh, you mean male. Ah, uh, dear sirs, why do they always write to me as if I'm several men? Oh, my God, what a gift of a question. Please let me answer. No, I don't want the sort. I want nice mail. Excuse me, may I butt in about a matter concerning the rest of my life? Why ask me, then? You are late. Can I help at all? Shut up. Well, she asked me to ask her. Even after he said he didn't love me. Any phone calls? Um, your son phoned. He loves you, by the way. He asked me to say that. Love. Which to James means, when can he bring his washing home? Lunchtime. Excuse me. <laughs> May I return to a rather significant detail? What I said was the truth. That's why I said no. Have you seen a doctor? Yes. By which you mean no? I have seen a doctor. About your brains? The last baby I had was born below my neck. <laughs> Every baby, Jane. You can hand in your notice right now if it appalls you and take a month's pay. No, I thought you'd understand. You need a shave. So why don't you tell the whole world our business? Go on, why not? Open a window. I snore, I take sleeping pills, I wear yellow socks. Mr Morgan, I'm a private secretary. The day I gossip about the people I work for, yellow. <laughs> your office is that way, as I recall. Two pounds per square metre per square day at the last costing. You mean you pay the floor more than you pay me? Well, it gives me more support. <laughs> your mother phone. Good. Who does she love? She wanted to know if everything was all right. Fine, Mum, fine. Come in. Yes. Can I ask a question? Company credo. Anyone can ask me anything, any time, as long as they speak quickly. Do you love me? Now, have I got that in the right order? Or do you? Oh, yes. Well, don't stop there. Oh, that's the thing about love. It's a word on its own. It shouldn't need elaboration. Love is also a verb, a doing word. Yes, well, I think we've proved that to everybody's satisfaction. <laughs> I am talking about love. <laughs> you stupid bitch. <laughs> you see, you can be romantic. <laughs> what a hell of a week this is turning into. Monday, I'm going to be a father. Tuesday, I'm going to get married. Wednesday, I was going to get married. Shall I keep tomorrow free for anything? What I mean is that my first husband... You've only had one. ...had all the charm of a breeze block. When he died... With a puzzled look on his face. I said, next time, wine and roses. You've had no breakfast, you foolish boy. Yes, I have. Humble pie. Marry me. That's the deal. Take it or leave it. Oh, it's all business, is it? Hmm. Seems practical. Yes, so is a tea bag, but sooner or later they burst in your cup and all the little bits float to the top and get stuck in your tea bag. I hate you, Jane. I've always bloody hated you. Oh, dear. Just as love can be love, hate can be hate. I can't tell her, that's what I'm telling you. Oh, I hope you feel better. Do go in, Mr. Green. In as in in. <laughs>
don't try and be clever with me. I've got letters up to my name. I'm an associate of a royal institute. Pretty impressive. You can just run a million pound company. My concern is also for the staff. Shall I get your mother on the phone? My mother is the second to last person I ever want to speak to again. You are the third. And there's still Barney Coates' factory to finish. The longest story in the history of the brick. What's this? <laughs> Ten industrial units. Mm. Three luxury houses, Ascot maybe. Church farm. Hey, yes. There goes the sign. Next it'll be the glasses on the table. Helen, <laughs> you've been working for the tax man for ten years, right? What has he told you? Nothing. One thing. He doesn't like me. The pound is more deflated than I am. So borrow other people's money. Don't spend your own. And who would have lent me close on 200,000? You know those shops with all that bulletproof glass? They're called banks. I can't help it. It's my upbringing. I'd like to pay my way. Paying your way is a thing of the past. Borrow your way till I say otherwise. You're trying to tell me off, aren't you? Sharp girl. You are my accountant, not my father. Please bear that in mind, except when you send me the bill. You cannot go on buying huge chunks of this county with your own money. It's obscene. I am going to throw a word at you, Ken, and with any luck, it'll knock your head off. Future. Future's been here ten years, girl. Today is worth less than tomorrow. Tomorrow may be worth more than today tomorrow, but not today. How dare you get the hump with me eh? and then confuse me? If all you're trying to say is that I am useless, then be a man and say it. I admire you. How dare you? Oh. <laughs> Jane, black and strong, and I ain't talking about Joe Louis. <laughs> but would you love me? Well, it's a bit cramped in here, but... <laughs> if you were a man, I, I, I mean, I know you are a man, but suppose you weren't. What would I be instead, a snowdrop? <laughs> would you? No, don't use that. I've got a phone number on it. 019 blur blur teardrop. If if you were a young man. Oh, thought I was. No, very young. What and how old would you be? Uh, woman. 34. Plus seven. The answer is yes. That's the straightest answer I've given this year. You know how cagey I am about direct statements? Yes. You're pregnant. Am I? Oh, I've been through it six times. You know how many nappies that works out to? No, why should you care? <laughs> a nap is your business. I wish they were mine. 17,000. <laughs> Divide it by six and let me know what I'm in for. 2,833.33. Recurring. <laughs> well, don't look so pleased about it. It's well over a thousand quid straight down the drain. If you're going to cry again, go do it on the rubber plant. You'll never convince me you're the cynic of your dreams, Ken. Six children, each one of them horrible. Well, I say they're horrible, but God help anyone who agrees with me. <laughs> but I look down that table some nights and I can see seven sets of teeth going. <laughs> and I think if I drop dead tomorrow, who's going to keep those jaws going up and down? <laughs> Cost effectively. Hmm. And you thank God someone invented the Passover. <laughs> You're in a state, right? Postnatal depression. Oh. Quite the contrary. Prenatal joy. Happy, sad. What's the difference? So Angela's got this cousin who married a gynecologist. Why not go see him? Say shalom. Cost you nothing but the petrol. Why do you always know someone who knows someone else? And why are they always in your family? <laughs> you think 5,000 years of history taught us nothing? Look, <laughs> children are children, but they're also an investment. Aim for four. First one, a doctor. Second, an accountant. Third, a solicitor. Fourth, a geriatric nurse. <laughs> you want dinner with us tonight? Bring your own chair. Why do I always feel better when I see you? Save your money. I'll let you scream and shout. You're like a breath of fresh Valium. <laughs> I can't tonight. Jimmy's coming home. Oh. What's he studying these days? History. History. Very useful. Knowing what all those people should have done and didn't, and now they're dead, so we can't tell them. <laughs> Not <either. laughs> Forget about the industrial units. They won't be worth the air that fills them. Barney Coates, leave him to me. Why? My brother-in-law is his accountant. <laughs> Just get his roof on, he'll pay. <laughs> uh, three luxury houses, Ascot, maybe. But get moving on them. 
church farm. Not your kind of rubbish. I'm going to live in it. Your kind of rubbish. <laughs> uh, who is this better young man? Uh, my architect. How young? Uh, 34 plus 7 minus 16. <laughs> It's a lot of nappies. <laughs> Morning. Don't say a word, Arthur, right? Right. <clears throat> I want this floor taken down 12 inches. Bloody hell. <laughs> I may or may not know this, but Mrs. Walker intends to live in this ramshackled edifice. So, I want a big bottomless pit dug right here. Then I want it covered over with very flimsy cardboard that looks like a doormat. I want a picture of me on that doormat. You taking all this in? Well, I'm listening. Put it that way. Then when she walks in and wipes her feet all over me as usual, ka -doing. So, I want a video camera over there to record it all so that I can play back the look on her face over and over again, very, very slowly. These stairs will have to go. Hang on a second, Arthur. I haven't finished yet. When she's good and down there and working out how much it costs to dig such a bloody great hole, I want you to fill it in with iron filings and any slow-burning viruses you can lay your hands on. She's upset you, isn't she? <laughs> Good heavens, no. She ain't got no feelings. She's a woman. Those two facts are related. I've been married to women all my life. <laughs> if that hole's big enough, I've got one or two names to suggest. Hmm. Well, she'll need someone to shout out for the next 2,000 years. Oh, I mean, it's uh, <clears throat> not as if you haven't done the right thing by her, is it? Go on, Arthur. Well, you are the father, and you have asked her to marry you. Who told you that load of absolute truth? <laughs> About four different people mentioned it today. <clears throat> right. Well, the kitchen's through there, Arthur. I want you to make sure that every single socket is not earthed, and that the live wires are connected up to the water tap. Can you do that for me? <clears throat> Be a shock for her, though. <laughs> Jim! Jim! Oh, how did you know? Where I live? Well, it's not the kind of thing you forget. Uh, but, uh, no, why, why the flowers? Oh, I see, you're in shock. Uh, you think I brought you a present. Uh, they were in the lobby. Oh, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. Jimmy. What's the matter? Um, washing machine's broken. 200 miles I travelled to meet a dead washing machine. You rotten kid. How are you? Not and strong. Because I show you some affection, you think I'm ill? No. <coughs> um, Jimmy, how quickly can you relax? Good enough. Have a drink. I don't. Oh, yes, you do. But I, I never drink. Mum, come on. It's time you did. <laughs> are you on the wagon? You make me sound like an alcoholic. No, I just said that because... The way you said it, I'm your mother. You're supposed to love me no matter what. Yeah. Oh, your vocabulary has decreased. There was a time when you would have said yes. Now you just say yeah. See, I'm drinking. Watch. This is your mother sipping a gin and tonic. Gin. <laughs> if I suddenly said you were, well, being odd, would you... Odd? Agree with me? No, you wouldn't. How would you like a baby brother to play with? <laughs> Why, not a brother, but a sister, then. Well, what kind of games did you have in mind? <laughs> Why, I, I thought I'd leave that to you. You were always an inventive child. You remember all those little battleships you blew up in the bath? Um, well, perhaps you'd ha rather have a, a new father instead, a, a, a brand new one, or, or as, as, as well, even. You're not with me, are you? I'm ahead of you. Who? When, where, and how? Well, to take the last one first, I thought we covered all that ten years ago. Do you remember the story about Mrs. Pollen and Mr. Stain? <laughs> it was it the other way round? Anyway, um, they kissed in a special way. It's been an enormous help. Yes. Um, <laughs> as to the where, well, where else? And the when? It's due in November. And the who? A very good band indeed. <laughs> Sorry, um, you don't know him. Will I ever? Architect. Well, will I have to change my name? Jimmy Tect. <laughs> You're not 
cross them? Good question. Or jealous? Another good question. I suppose they ought to be, really. Very funny emotion, knowing you should be something, but can't be bothered. Jimmy, you could actually go overboard and say you're pleased. Or nearly pleased. At having someone to play with? Well? <laughs> I'm nearly pleased. I'm definitely nearly pleased. Widower. Divorcee. Who? Architect. Oh. <laughs> His name's Peter. Peter Morgan. Bit of all right, is he? Oh, yes. He's not 95 or anything like that, is he? No, couldn't be. Well, it has been known. I mean, not this far north. Uh, but... Nearly right. <laughs> well, the five's right. <laughs> Twenty-five. So what's wrong with that? <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> no, it isn't. Well, some people might think it was a bit... Look at me. Profile? I mean, how does one say to one's mother that this bloke's very lucky? that one sees his point of view quite clearly, without it sounding like Oedipus ring your mother urgent. <laughs> Thank you. He doesn't love me. What? No, you don't mean what. Just giving yourself time to let it soak in, like me. Afternoon, Jed. Afternoon, Miss Walker. I'm en route to ask a feel. I just put in to say, isn't the telephone a wonderful invention? Oh, yes. I mean, without the telephone, you'd have had to drive round to all your cronies to tell them how pregnant I am. Uh, were they pleased? Delighted. Oh, good. How do they feel about the father being a tiny bit younger than me? Jealous, most of them. Oh, dear. I didn't want to upset them. Uh, your friend Tony Harshorn isn't jealous. Congratulations on your forthcoming etc. <laughs> if you weren't a woman, Jane, I'd fire you. And now you're just being silly. Oh, how foolish of me. I thought I owned this firm. Oh, you inherited it, yes. Have you put those in water? What about your hay fever? Uh, they're flowers, not hay. Are there <laughs> any more in the office? Uh, no. No roses? Not yet. Give him time. Where's Mr. Morgan, Arthur? Please rat on him. <laughs> you want to buy some wine and steal some roses? It's his lunch hour. Is he going to eat them? No. Pity. Come closer, Arthur. <laughs> Very close. <laughs> now. Am I my father? Well? No, of course not. Why do I ask? There'll be a drainage problem. <laughs> Stand on that buttercup. <laughs> now, I shall ask and answer the questions. Am I my father? No. Why do I ask? Because when John Carrington appeared on site, we used to flatten ourselves into the brickwork. Why? Because John Carrington was a tyrant. Now I ask you, what am I? What's the female a tyrant? <laughs> I don't know, because I'm not one. It's probably got an E on the end of it. So stop being frightened of me! Your father asked me to keep an eye on you just before he died. I've let him down. Yes, well... You've got a drainage problem already. Please don't make me add to it. <laughs> oh, look, there's Mr. Morgan. Doesn't he look late? Doesn't he sing well? How nice of you to join us. There's a man following me, if anyone's interested. We're fascinated. Uh, living room here, Arthur, two aspects. One over there, one facing the south. May I introduce you to the man that's been following me? Mr. Morgan? Do you know that there are hundreds of us in the telephone book? I've counted. Peter Morgan? Yes, Pete. My friends call me. What are these? Uh, round banana? Small melon? Socks. <laughs> Yours? Yes. I demand that you fall in love with my mother. Jay! Keep out of this mother. It's nothing to do with you. <laughs> Would she be a tall lady? Voice to put the semaphore out of business. Yes. One window here. <laughs> Come here. Uh, he's quite all right where he is. 
I found these jammed in the outflow of her washing machine. True or not? True, and now they're nice and clean. Have them. They're yours a gift. This woman is in pieces. Why do I have some tube of glue? Come out from behind her. I came home to find her in tears. Oh, well, that's because someone screwed out of 5p. Not me. Now, let's <laughs> take the verb in that sentence and apply it differently. James! <laughs> Sign right. Let us ten foot high. Do you know the last time she cried, do you? When I was born. Tears of joy, I'm sure. Don't you know anything about women? Yes! No. I can verify that. <laughs> She's romantic, weak, vulnerable. He noticed, why didn't you? Take it or leave it, you said. That's the deal. That bitch has got the office bugged. Jane, Jane has. I am part of the Puritan backlash. I insist that you fall in love with my mother. James, my boy. <laughs> Maybe I will. But I'm not going to lie to her, or to myself. Now, well, surely that must count for something. Oh, you're an architect. Everything done to your specification. Well, love isn't a specification. That's what I was trying to say. And you were too busy foaming at the ears. Don't worry. You'll grow out of it. Perhaps you're right. And if you're right, then she's wrong. Yes. But don't try hitting me, dear, because I shall hit you back. <laughs> Did you have to upset him? Arthur, what on earth are you doing? I'm upstairs. <laughs> Arthur, what on earth are you doing? Looking down. Children. She wants to see you. What about? How should I know? Well, you know everything else, Jane. Your mother phoned. Oh, really? And how does she feel about being a granny? That is an insinuation. Very good. <laughs> yes? You know those little white things in the middle of your fingers? Both God and I intended them for knocking. You do have some friends in high places. What a pity you're not one of them. <laughs> you wanted me, professionally. I love you. Won't that be a fun thing to tell all your friends? Will you stop talking to me like I just got out of kindergarten? Sorry. Sorry as in what did you say? I'm sorry! We advance. Slowly, but we advance. Wine and roses. In the same bottle, no less. From me to you. You smiled. I saw it. What's the date? With love or love? With love. And a few green fly. I'll get the glasses. Uh, later. I'd like you to sign this. To Jane, in whom we trust from Helen and... You wicked girl. And Peter. Now, come with me. Jane, we've got a present for you. Mrs. Walker, how kind of you. And me. It's kind of me, too. Helen and Peter. Now, where is it? Pristine Prithy R. Private. Of a conversation intended for the person or persons concerned, 1660. That is to say, it has meant the same thing for 300 years. Present? Leaving present? You're not leaving, Jane, are you? No. I mean, after all, if you know so much about our business, just think what you know about our competitors. Yes. Do you know that Mr. Cartwright and his uh, wife... Some other time, dear. I thought we'd get an Indian. To replace me. <laughs> Take away. Oh, I've forgotten my wine and roses. Your mother phoned. Shun, shunt, shut. Shut up. To shut one's mouth. Stop talking. 1983. <laughs>